Hello, National University Academy Biology students. It's Mr. Goyette, just going over with you a few things uh, on Unit 1 uh, to go back and review. Uh, also, you'll want to review this for your before you take your midterms to jot these this information down in your notes. Uh, of course, I will cover it and remind you to go back to watch this video while we're in class at a later time. Um, so this is uh, for chapter... Let's see here covering chapter 12 and 13 and uh, it's going over uh, evolution, age of the earth, and uh, origin of the earliest species and organisms. Um, so, so far the oldest fossils found on earth are 2.5 billion years old. You'll see the ref uh, men mention of this on page 258, so I ask that you review that and take notes of page 258. Chloroplasts are thought to be a result of an invasion of a pro- or excuse me, pre-eukaryotic cells uh, mentioned on page 260 because they are um, photosynthetic bacteria. Uh, the destruction of the Earth's ozone layer by industrial chemicals is a valid concern and this is discussed on page 264 because ultraviolet light damages DNA. Um, the first animals to invade land uh, on page 266 were anthropods, so read over that, the anthropods. The most diverse group of animals on Earth is the insect group, uh, page 266 again. Darwin thought that plants and animals of, of the Galapagos Islands were similar to those of the nearby coast of South America because the ancestors had migrated from South America to the Galapagos. Uh, you can review this on page 268 of your textbook. Please take notes from, um, on that page. Uh, natural selection is the process by which organisms um, with traits well suited for their environment survive and reproduce at a greater rate than less well adapted organisms in the same environment. You can review this information for your, your CSTs, uh, which you'll be asked similar questions on your CSTs, and for the quiz on page 279. The major idea that Darwin presented in his book The Origin of Species was that species changed over time by natural selection. The hypothesis that evolution occurs at a slow, constant rate is known as gradualism, and that's reviewed on page 282 of your biology textbook. The Lerman bubble or uh, model proposes that ammonia and methane gases were trapped in underwater bubbles. Um, it, uh, gases reacted within bubbles producing organic molecules. Organic molecules were released in the air when the bubbles or popped. Of course, this whole process is going to create uh, an atmosphere. Uh, the, Lerman, the Lerman process you can look uh, at again on page 255 of your textbook. And let me just read a little bit of that for you. In uh, 1986, the geophysicist Louis Lerman suggested that the key process to formation of chemicals needed for life took place within bubbles on the ocean's surface. Lerman's hypothesis, also known as the bubble model, is uh, summarized in figure 3 on page 255. So take notes on figure 3 on page 255. Cyanobacteria are thought to be the ancestors of chloroplasts. That's reviewed on page 260. The most common, common living bacteria today are eubacteria, eubacteria E-U bacteria. E-U-B-A-C-T-E-R-I-A, -E eubacteria. Um, okay, eukaryotes or eukaryotic cells may have descended from archaea, archaea bacteria, archaea bacteria, A-R-C-H-A-E-B-A-C-T-E-R-I-A, -E -E archaea bacteria. Pro or pre-eukaryotic cells did not contain DNA. So eukaryotic cells obviously do. After the mass extinction population size of remaining species will increase because the predators and other organisms that would eat them uh, are out of the way. Um, and of course the species that are the survival species are uh, more equipped for harsh conditions so those particular species tend to thrive despite 
the harshness of the environment. So those populations increase after a mass extinction. A layer of ozone in the atmosphere was critical to the formation of life on land. This is reviewed on page 264 because the ozone blocks ultraviolet, ultraviolet radiation. Uh, going back to spiders, lobsters, insects, um, all exam uh, examples of anthropods where the, those were the first uh, organisms to come on, come on land. That's reviewed on page 266 yet again. Which of the following describes a population? Remember, remember the key about population, if you look on page 278 for your definition, um, and I do ask that you do take notes on the book as you go, and I know I keep saying that, but please do it. It'll help you pass the test. It'll also help you get ready for your uh, California State tests coming up here in a week. The term population is used in biology uh, does not refer does not only refer to a human population. In the study of biology, a population consists of all the individuals of a species that live in a specific geographical area that can be that can interbreed. So specific geographical area. That's the key thing to remember about that population, because your uh, some of the questions you'll run into will give you some examples, and one of your examples is. Dogwood trees in Middletown, Connecticut. That's a specific geographical area. So you know they're saying, over here, I'm the answer. Um, okay. The hypothesis that evolution occurs at a regu irregular rate through geologic time is known as punctuated equilibrium. And we already mentioned gradual, uh, gradualism. This is the, um, the other explanation for some of the fits and starts, the jumps in geologic or evolutionary. Um, development, and this is reviewed on page 282 of your textbook, uh, and you're looking for punctuated equilibrium there. Um, last thing I'm going to review, since natural resources are limited, all organisms face a constant struggle for existence. We've talked about scarcity both in economics and in biology. They do have, uh, there are things you have to focus in on here. So that's all I'm going to talk to you about today. Uh, this is just a quick review for Unit 1, your quiz for Unit 1, and for your CSTs. So uh, good luck on those tests. Please call, email, or Skype with your questions or concerns about the course. And I look forward to working with you in class.